So let's imagine we're out somewhere, I don't know, perhaps a social gathering. And uh, maybe I'm not having too good a time, right? I don't want to insult the hostess. So I look across the room, I see my buddy back there, and I'm like, hey, let's pull jokes. <laughs> okay? So we feel ready. We'll pull up our engines. Jokes. I will not. God bless the pig. Yeah. Anyhow, welcome aboard here this morning. It's a pleasure to stand before you here. It's one of the few uh, old timers left. Uh -huh. I'm 95 years old. Wow. Wow. I spent three years in this type of aircraft during the War of the Pacific. Our mission started. This was the only Navy patrol bomber we had in the war storm. All men on it and we could see their wake in the water, they couldn't see us. What a treat, what a picnic. <laughs> it turned things around for us 100%. We got credit for sinking over 100,000 tons of enemy shipping and damaging 100,000 tons during our night operations. So you can imagine five or six squadrons of these black cats in the Pacific. And if they were doing as well as our squadron, Japanese were hurting pretty bad. Excellent feature in a fight. But it was very difficult to fly. What we call in aviation unforgiving. As a matter of fact, by the end of the war, more pilots would die in training accidents in this airplane than in combat. You'll see that again, it has the fixed pitch wooden propeller attached to an early model aircraft engine called a rotary engine. I think you'll find this interesting. Watch what happens when I spin the propeller. You can see that the entire engine spins. There is a fixed crankshaft. As the pistons go up and down, they drive the entire engine attached directly to the propeller around the crankshaft. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air.
Success consists of having a good relationship with all the passengers, requiring that we give the best of ourselves. The mystery to everyone is, we don't know at which station we ourselves will step down. So we must live in the best way, love, forgive, and offer the best of who we are. It is important to do this because when the time comes for us to step down and leave our seat empty, we should leave behind beautiful memories for those who will continue to travel on the train of life without us. I wish you a joyful journey for the coming years on your train of life. Reap success, give lots of love, and be happy. More importantly, be thankful for the journey. Lastly, I thank you for being one of the passengers on my journey. Now I'll hear the reading of the departed. Morris, if you will, please. Ellis Bergquist, CM2. Philip W. Michael, SM3. Stanley H. Mundy, MR2. Paul Serbian, RMSN. Larry Stringer, EM3. John Towson, FTG2. John Jack Garrick, MR3. Welcome by Robert Longley. Time to come home, dear brother, your tour of duty through. You've given as much as anyone to be expected to do. Just a few steps further, the smoke will start to clear. Others here will guide you. You have no need of fear. You have not failed your brothers. You clearly gave it all. And through your selfless actions, others will hear the call. So take your place of honor among those who have gone before and know you will be remembered for now and evermore. <laughs> that the uh, USS Coney not only dared to be great, but that she was great. From Pearl Harbor to the Purvis Bay, from Bougainville to the Empress Bay, from Saipan to the Guadalcanal and countless other places, she indeed was great, both she and her crew. USS Coney DD-508 was launched on 16 August 1942. As you well know, she was named for Mr. Joseph S. Coney, a naval officer who fought during the Civil War and who ultimately lost his life as he went down with his ship off Cape Hatteras on 10 February 1867. The Coney was a 2,000-ton Fletcher-class destroyer. It was built and ultimately left Boston in 1942, heading for the South Pacific, where she fought until the end of World War II, during which time she earned battle star participation in operations against the Solomon Islands, the New Georgia Vela Vela operation. The Coney was the flagship for the late <coughs> Vice Admiral Theodore Wilkinson, the commander of the 3rd Amphibious Force. On January 1, 1947, the Coney was inactivated and became a part of the reserve fleet until she was later recommissioned as an experimental destroyer and specialized <coughs> and anti-submarine warfare operations. During that recommissioning, then Congressman John F. Kennedy, here's what he had to say. It's a great honor for me to join with you today in recommissioning the USS Coney as an experimental destroyer. The Coney, like many of us here today, is a veteran of the last war. She rendered distinguished service in the Solomon Islands, the campaign the hardest and the most dangerous duty 
that destroyers encounter in the Pacific. The Coney won her battle stars in some of the great actions of World War II. And finally, some, some gripping comments from FC1, Russ Poe, he, he shared this account. He said, with regard to the night raid on Villa, I remember it very well. It was our first sortie deep into Japanese territory. There had been a coconut plantation at Villa Stanmore. That night, we were assigned to deal with any small craft who might be present. I believe we were the lead ship going in. We had to pass within range of Japanese shore batteries. Fortunately, we took them by surprise, so we were not fired at going in. When we entered the harbor, two Japanese destroyers were discovered, not known to be there by the earlier coast watcher intelligence. When the discovery was made, all of our ships concentrated fire on two Japanese ships, and they were put down within minutes. Then all of us made a sweep of the area fighting at shore installations as we made our way out. On the way out, the shore batteries opened up on us, but fortunately none of our ships were hit. There were several near misses, and rounds were reported as having passed between our stacks. It was later discovered that one man had been killed aboard one of our cruisers because he ventured too close to one of their main battery turrets and was killed by the muzzle blast. I'll never forget that night action because I remember we discussed what we would do if we had to abandon ship and go into the water. Having heard those islands were inhabited by cannibals and headhunters, not to mention the Japanese, the opinion was equally divided as to whether to swim for shore or to stay in the water hoping to get picked out by one of our own ships. Just to name a few of the other notorious uh, places that, that the Coney served and fought. The Coney took part, as you well know, in the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba in April of 1961, and ultimately she reverted back to being a DD-508 on 30 June 1962. In October of 62, she took part in the blockade of Cuba during the missile crisis, and on 27 October, Coney intercepted the Soviet submarine B-59, an incident which nearly led to war between the United States and the Soviet Union. For sure, USS Coney has a vast and storied history. All those that served were proud of their ship. She was ultimately decommissioned and stricken 2 July and was then sunk as a target off Puerto Rico on 20 March 1970. I'll close with these comments, this simple poem of Mr. Richard Scar, I think fitting as we remember those that have gone on before us and those that are still here with us. Mr. Scar put it this way. He said, No more a watch the sand to stand, old sailor. You are now outward bound on the ebbing tide. Eight bells have rung, and the last watch is done. Now a new berth waits, you on the other side. Your ship is now anchored in God's harbor, and your shipmates are sailors of the Lord. They are mustered on the deck to greet you and ready to pipe you as you come aboard. Her boilers are full of steam and ready to go full steam ahead. The cargo is stowed and the galley is stored just waiting to get underway when the last hand comes aboard. So look sharp. That hand is you, old sailor, and you'll be sailing out on heavenly seas. May the wind be ever at your back. Fair weather and Godspeed.
watched you go to the woman you are But I'm not sure how it's gonna feel without you always around. And I know there's gonna come a time when I'll be.
Thank you.